Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to my channel. Right now we're heading towards the Royal Pavilion in Brighton and we'll see you guys there in Brighton. Hi guys, ketemu lagi dengan saya. Kali ini kita ke Brighton ya. Saya akan bercerita tentang the Royal Pavilion. Now we're at the Royal Pavilion. The Royal Pavilion, also known as the Brighton Pavilion, is in Brighton, England. Beginning in 1787, it was built as a retreat for George Prince of Wales, who became the Prince Regent in 1811 and King George IV in 1820. Pavilion Karaja and Juga Dikanal Sebagai Pavilion Brighton Adela Bukas Kudiaman Karaja and Terdaftar Tinkat Satu Yang Terleta di Brighton Ingris Mulai Tahun Tuju Blas Lapan Tuju Dibangun Dalam Tida Tiga Tahap Sebagai Tempat Peristirahan Tepi Laut Untuk George Pengeran Wales yang menjadi pengeran bupati pada tahun 1811 dan Raja George IV pada tahun 1820. 1815, George commissioned John Nash to begin the transformation from modest villa into the magnificent oriental palace that we see today, which is the Royal Pavilion. 
This stage of the construction took a number of years. Nash superimposed a cast iron frame into, onto Holland's earlier construction to support a magnificent vista of minarets, domes and pinnacles on the exterior. And no expenses and no expense was spared on the interior with many rooms, galleries and corridors being carefully decorated with opulent decorations and exquisite furnishings. Pada tahun 1815, Judge menugaskan John Nas untuk memulai transformasi dari villa sederhana menjadi istana oriental megah yang kita lihat sekarang. Tahap konstruksi ini memakan waktu beberapa tahun. Nas melapiskan rangka besi cor ke konstruksi Belanda sebelumnya untuk mendukung pemandangan, menara, kuba, dan puncak yang menakjubkan di bagian luar. Dan tidak ada biaya yang dikeluarkan untuk interior dengan banyak ruangan, galeri, dan koridor yang didekorasi dengan hati-hati dengan dekorasi mewah dan perabotan yang indah. The Royal Pavilion, one of the most fantastic buildings in Europe, extravagant and eccentric. It dramatically reflects the personality of its creator, King George IV. In 1786, George then Prince of Wales took up the residence in a modest lodging house in Brighton. Over the next 35 years during which he became Prince Regent and then King George commissioned the development of the building into a spectacular Indian style palace. Although it appears to be Indian on the outside, Chinese on the inside. It is actually only a Western interpretation of the East. George never visited either but loved the exotic fantastical vision of both. Queen Victoria used the pavilion as a royal residence until 1845 when she decided to sell it. She felt she was constantly being stared back by the public and it was too public a palace for her family. 143 wagons of the interior furnishings and decorations were removed and taken to London for the royal collection. In 1849, a bill was brought before Parliament. The pavilion was eventually bought by the town for £53,000. In 1861, Brighton Museum opened in the pavilion and 1866, the town's first library was established here. Pavilion Kerajaan, salah satu bangunan paling fantastik di Eropa, mewah dan Eksentrik secara dramatis mencerminkan kepribadian penciptanya Raja George IV pada tahun 1786. Selama 35 tahun berikutnya, ia menjadi pangeran dan kemudian Raja George memerintahkan pembangunan gedung tersebut menjadi istana bergaya India yang spektakuler, meskipun tampak seperti India di luar dan Cina di dalam. One of its most extraordinary uses was the hospital for Indian soldiers during the First World War, at a time when Britain desperately needed to retain the loyalty of India. The pavilion hospital became a valuable propaganda tool. Pavilion ini juga digunakan sebagai rumah sakit bagi tentara India selama Perang Dunia Pertama. There are lots of myths about the existence of the tunnel under the pavilion gardens. The, there is only one tunnel which leads to the Prince Regent Stables, which is now the Dome. It is 60, 60 meters long and was constructed in 1821 at a cost of 1,783 pounds. George had it built at a time where, when he was very unpopular with the public and was embarrassed to be seen due to his increasing weight. It allowed him to cross his entire estate unseen. The tunnel was also used by servants, servants and for deliveries. It offered hidden access into the pavilion. Banyak sekali mitos tentang keberadaan terowongan di bawah pavilion ini. Sebenarnya hanya ada satu terowongan yang mengarah ke istal pangeran yang sekarang menjadi kuba. Panjangnya sekitar 60 meter dan dibangun pada tahun 1821 dengan biaya 1783 pound. George membangunnya pada saat dia sangat tidak populer dengan publik dan malu untuk dilihat karena berat badannya yang selalu meningkat. Kemudian dia melintasi seluruh tanah miliknya tanpa terlihat. Terowongan ini juga digunakan oleh para pelayan dan untuk pengiriman. Terowongan ini menawarkan akses tersembunyi ke pavilion.
And this is where the tunnel leads to. Dan tunnel panjang tadi keluarannya arah ini. Thank you guys for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, share and subscribe and comment down below. Don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out any videos just like this one. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Terima kasih udah nonton video kita. Ini udah end of the video ya. Jangan lupa like, share and subscribe. Subscribe itu gratis dan jangan takut ya. Dan aktifkan belnya jadi tidak ketinggalan video menarik lainnya. Dan sampai ketemu lagi di next video. Video. Assalamualaikum. Bye.